Welcome back to the channel everyone. As you can see we got the wood stove back inside. Over the holidays they have a party here in the shed so that had to go outside. Not a big deal. Got that back inside. As you can see here I got the fan and the electrical laid out. This will be on a thermostat but just for the time being I'm just going to wire it to a plug-in with a switch. Uh, main reason just testing purposes. I can always add that thermostat later on. We need to cover a few things quick before we get into this though. Everyone keeps thinking this is an exhaust. This is not, this is the clean out. Exhaust hole is right here. We will get that welded on today so there's no more confusion. A lot of people were thinking that the fire is going to travel from the back and straight up and out. It's not. It has to curve around, come up and back and then out. So just to clean out. We'll make a cap for that today as well. Another thing we're going to address today is trying to get this door put on. Uh, I know some people weren't a fan of the cast iron doors. I've never run one. I've made homemade doors in the past. I wasn't a fan of them. Also have the uh, ash clean out in. There's some snow in there so it won't close all the way. And then there is a small grate in here. Now I am not opposed to putting fire brick inside here. I actually do have fire brick from when I was going to build a kiln years ago for smelting aluminum or copper or what have you. Uh, one of those projects that just never took off. So I do have fire brick. I just want to run it without and see. Um, everyone thinks this is going to soot up. I think it's going to run warm enough. It's not going to be an issue. We will find out. So thanks everyone for liking the last video and following along. We're going to jump right back into this. Keep going with it. So we're going to start out with this fan. What this is, it's just an, a takeout from an old furnace. Um, it seemed to be lightly used. Didn't really have a whole lot of dirt in that built up in it. A fairly clean unit. And I like the fact that it is the older motor. It's not the newer style motor that needs a circuit board to run it. These just have a simple capacitor. And depending on which speed you want to run is which wires you want to hook up. I'm going to start with it on high just to try that. If we need to bump it down, not a big deal. And that is just black and white. Um, have a just a power supply cord here and then I'm going to screw this box probably about right in here or maybe a little over so let's get after it okay I changed my mind I don't want it here reason being I don't know how hot the back of that is gonna get I don't think it's gonna really be a problem but then my next thought was move it over here but then my wires aren't quite long enough and I'm really bending them, pulling them across everything. I more like it where I have it now. I can bring everything over this way, punch out that top knock out there and punch out the bottom left over here for the power cord. Okay, with the box mounted, I'm going to go ahead and wire this up. For those of you who don't know how to wire a 110 circuit, there's many videos on it. Um, I'm not going to be the one to show you. It's fairly simple in my book, but I'm not going to try teaching electrical um, just in case something happens on your end. So I'll bring you back once I have everything tidied up. Okay, with everything wired up, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. These are all going nice into there. They're not kinked over themselves. That turned out pretty good. Let's make sure it works. I would say that's successful. So let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so I welded a piece of flat strap in the bottom. There's actually two pieces there that create like a pocket. We're going to go ahead and set the fan in and then there's two top holes that I'm going to drill for a quarter inch bolt and that's just going to hold the fan in. Thank you. 
All right, with the studs welded in, we're gonna go ahead and throw the fan back up there and see if we can get this bolted on. So, moment of truth, we'll see how much air actually comes out of that bottom pipe. As you can see, it's dripping water right now. I'm going to go flip the fan on, see what happens. Well, as you can see, it shot water out of the very top ones. The bottom one, it did speed up how much was coming out of there. And I did uh, look, it's actually still packed with snow. So I don't know how much we're going to get out of it at this point. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here. That's still got a bunch of snow in it, whereas these pretty much don't. If you look way back there, you can see the fan. In the meantime, not that I want to work in a puddle of water as it's draining on me, but I do want to get that door mounted. So I'm going to go grab the frame and the door, bring that back over here, and we'll start drilling holes. Well, I got the door leveled, clamped into place, pretty happy with where it's at. So I'm going to go ahead and start drilling. There's 12 holes here, three quarter inch plate. Shouldn't be too bad, but I don't think you guys need to watch me do that. So I'll bring you back when we're all done. All right, I just finished up tightening all the bolts around the door frame, except for this one down here. Uh, reason is the slide here needs to be able to open and shut that damper. And that will need to be a countersunk screw or bolt. These are all supposed to be countersunk, but the hardware that comes with this door is in my book inadequate so that went right in the garbage and i just put stainless bolts in so i'll run to the hardware store later and grab a stainless countersunk bolt that matches the rest of this and that should be just fine let's go ahead and get the door put on it okay with the door on the next problem we're going to run into is right here if we can focus on this instead of what's behind us that is the pin that they send for your hinge should be one for the top and the bottom the problem is i only got one so i'm not really a big fan of these anyway they're not that robust so i think what i'm going to do is drill through and just put a standard bolt back in there uh, i know these pins might be hard but like i said with only the one it doesn't do me a whole lot of good anyway There, I like that a lot better. I think that'll hold up better too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just snug them up and I will double nut the bottom of those. That's why they're so long. That way they're not pinching, but they still stay snug. Alrighty, with the door wrapped up, now we need to move on to exhaust to fill this hole up. Back over here on the table that we wired the fan on. So this is my adapter that was cut to fit that 20 inch pipe. This is eight inch. We're gonna step down to six because that's what my exhaust is. And we're gonna go with a flange because we're gonna switch to stainless 
exhaust actually going up and out of the roof. Two reasons. One, I already have the pipe. And two, I had both a 6-inch steel flange and a 6-inch stainless flange. What I did not have was a 8 to 6 reducer. I had an 8 to 4, so I ended up making this in the lathe. I cut this off. That's why it looks kind of shiny. It should work out just fine for smoke. So I'm going to go ahead and get those three pieces welded together. And then while we're at it, I have these. These are going to be lifting eyes that are going to be welded to the top of the stove. I don't really want to lift off of these flanges. I'd rather have something that's a little more dedicated. I know these are plenty heavy, but these one front and one back, I think will be better than these two flanges at two different heights trying to pick and set the stove and with those three pieces tacked together and sitting up there, you can kind of see now why I don't want to lift off of those. I understand there are ways around them, or uh, ways around that, but it's just going to be easier for me to put like a lifting eye up front and a lifting eye out back here. And then if we come over here, I made this forklift boom a while back. And what we can do is there is a hook way out on the end there and there are holes along the bottom that we can put another hook in and then I can just run my chains however long they need to be and the nice advantage of that is this one also pivots so this is your pivot point and it can run up and down those slots what that does is if you get in an area where the forklift mast cannot fit so like this here if this gets in the way well I can lift up on that jib and be up at an angle and pick higher than that mast can go and with this wood stove that could be a problem uh, this shed obviously not a big deal but in mine I only have 12 foot sidewalls so we'll see we should be plenty good but it's just something I can do quick it's just gonna take a little bit of time to add those on and shouldn't be a problem. So with everything looking good on the exhaust, I'm gonna go ahead and get that welded on and I'll bring you back. Well, I believe I am done welding today. Got the top on, got the two hooks on. The only thing we have left to actually weld on this unit is these pipes yet. And I do have a plan for that. That will happen right before the install, which is Supposed to happen this weekend if everything goes according to plan. The exhaust is off getting welded because that is stainless and I don't have anything set up for stainless. So once that comes back, we should be able to put this in. But we have one last thing to do here today and that is to cap this and hopefully drive home the point that that is strictly a clean out. So let's go over to the lathe and we'll start making a cap. Well, I think I can honestly say this is the biggest, I shouldn't say biggest, heaviest piece I've had in the lathe since I've owned it. There's quite a bit of meat in here. So this is a cap for a pipe flange. The problem is it is the wrong size. It is too big, so we're gonna machine down the OD and then machine and step back into it so it sits down in like it's supposed to. Um, I have had rims in here before, but yes, nothing, nothing quite of this mass. Those aluminum rims kinda look quite small in comparison to this. So this is definitely a first. I've never had to turn my compound backwards I mean I have for angles and stuff before but never to get enough clearance for the swing that I am trying to do but now that we have everything kind of where we need to be I'm right at the end of my travel so you can see the kind of clearance I have probably about oh there's there's a good 16th there we're good
All right, with it machined, the OD to size and a good chamfer on this side, this will be the top. We need to flip it around now, get rid of this pipe that I'm using to hold on to it with. That's just welded onto here. We're gonna have to flip the jaws and get grab or grab onto this OD here and then turn this down so that this step fits inside of our eight inch pipe. Okay, so from this side, you can see I welded this pipe on in the center just so I had something to grab onto at first. These jaws will not open up to that full 16 inches. Even right now, we're hanging out quite a ways. Should be all right for this. We still have more than half the jaw in the chuck. But this is that step right here that I need to move in. So we're going to delete that, move that step. And this is done. There it is, the old step is gone. We turn that into this new smaller step. Let's go see how it fits. And there it is, guys. Except for the exhaust, this is ready to move, so the next time you guys see this, we'll be lighting a fire. I want to thank everyone for watching. Thanks for following along. We'll catch you on the next one.